Well, good morning, One Oak Church. Why don't you guys stand to your feet? Let's sing a couple songs together this morning. I 
worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, just sing that out. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are.
come on, there's nothing but truth in that. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. As we begin a new year, yes, we're five days into it, but this is our first Sunday of 2020. And as we begin a new year, it's, it's a fresh start. It's new beginnings. As many of you have done this, you have looked at what 2019 was, and you've maybe reminisced about the things you've accomplished or the vacations you went on, the relationships you built. And maybe it was a positive year. And maybe for some it was one that you can't wait to say goodbye to and get far away from. But today is, is a fresh start in our new beginning in our relationship with God. Every day can be that. In fact, the Bible says His mercies are new every morning. But as all of creation is celebrating a new year, we do the same today. And in celebrating a new year, we'll take communion to remember what the Lord has done. Today, when you walked in, you didn't receive the sacraments and you want to partake in communion today, just raise your hand and our ushers will give you the sacraments so you can participate in communion. We have a couple up front on either side. Just keep your hands up and they'll get them to you. When Jesus was in his final days, there was this supper that took place and it wasn't about what they were eating that day, it was about who he was eating with. It was those closest to him, those who had witnessed many miracles, those who had witnessed all that Jesus had done and understood him to be the Messiah. And Jesus was telling him that what he was about to do next is gonna be hard for them. But what they, he was about to do next was gonna be the best thing for them. And that he would go to a cross and he would lay down his life. No one took it from him. He laid it down. And that's what this represents. It represents the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so today we take communion. If you'll roll back that first layer and grab the bread from your communion cup today. Once you get it, just hold it in your hand. The Bible says, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. You'll take the bread and just break it at this time. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, if you'll take the bread. If you'll get the wine ready. In the same way, he also took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. If you'll take the cup. He said, for as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That what we're doing today is not about Robbie, but it's about Jesus Christ. And as you've received the cup, they're gonna pass the bucket to take the remnants that's left but if you'll lift your hand right now and let us thank Jesus for the life that he lived and the debt that he paid it wasn't his debt it wasn't his but he paid the price Jesus we thank you for Calvary we thank you for the cross we thank you for what it represents in all of our lives and that's a new beginning a fresh start in our relationship with you because it's your blood that was shed through a broken body that covers a multitude of sin. And it's through the cross that we all find common ground. We have different stories, different backgrounds, different pasts, but it's through the cross that we have common ground. We say thank you today. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. Darkness, my God, that is 
Just complete surrender to Him. 
Whatever you're believing and trusting God for, come on, right in this moment, just pray for that faith to begin to rise in your soul, in your spirit, in your heart. God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just call on his name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made strong presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be in our life, God, we just call upon your name. God, and you're there. God, you hear our cry right now, God. We lift up your name, and we know in faith, Jesus, that all things will work together because of you, and we thank you for that. In your precious, precious name, we pray. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen, amen. Come on, clap those hands and lift up the name of Jesus again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, there is no sweeter name than the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Thank you for being with us on this incredible day. Happy New Year. We're so glad to see all of your beautiful faces here. And as we continue in this service, we're, we wonder if you could just maybe greet somebody, high five about three people around you, meet somebody new, tell them they look good, and you're glad to see them here in the house today.
Happy New Year, everybody. Come on, how many glad to be in church? <laughs> you're like, that guy's going at 1,000 miles. You need to tone that down just a little bit. No, I'm glad you're here. My name's Rob. I get to be the pastor here. Thanks for coming to church today. Hey, let's give it up for the band. Did a great job leading us in worship. Come on, make some noise for them. Thanks for being here. We're so glad all of you are here, and it's a brand new year. It's a brand new decade. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Are you excited about it? I'm excited about a clean slate and just believing what God is going to do in 2020, and we're glad you're here. And if you're um, a guest here, you're a visitor, this is your first time, you are not a guest, you're not a visitor, you're our new friend, and we're so glad that you are here. And, and there's a packet there at your seat or the seat next to you, and, and there's a welcome home card in there. We would love for you to fill that out. It's just a connect card. It's just a way for us to get some information from you so that we can just thank you for being here today. And we have a really cool gift we'd like to give you. It's a free gift from us um, as our way to say thank you. So if you fill out that card, you can pass it in the bucket as it goes by, drop it in the bucket, or you can meet us outside at the New Friends Center, and um, we'd be glad to meet you. We want to meet you, Absolutely. and our team would love to meet you too, um, and I promise you it's a hassle-free guarantee. If you fill that card out, we're not going to call you. We're not going to show up on your doorstep, um, so don't worry about that, but we just want to thank you for being with us, and, and we hope you come back and see us again, and, and a great way to stay connected uh, is on social media. We all stay connected. I have friends all over the world that I love to connect with, and, and we want you to stay connected here to One Oak Church. So follow us on Instagram. Check in on Facebook. We have our live stream up and running on Facebook. You can share that. Let people know this is where you are today, and hopefully somebody will come back uh, with you next time. Absolutely, and one of the ways that you can find out more information about our church, you can go to, the, go to oneoakchurch.com, and you can uh, navigate that website. You can also find out how to take your next steps in your relationship with God on our website. Not only do we want to be a church that you come to, but we also want to help you build your relationship with God. And you might, hey, man, I've been coming to church for a while. I want to be a member of One Oak Church. You can do that on the website. Just go through the process. And you can sign up and join the team that way as well. Also, there's a following Jesus course. Maybe you're new to giving your life to Christ. And you want to, you want to build that relationship. And uh, that's the way you do it. You jump in there and do that as well. We offer that class during the second service every week. And so you can do that live or you can do it online at your convenience. I want to encourage you to do that. One when you get a chance, go to the App Store, go to your App Store, and download the Church Center app. We have a lot of great things happening at our church, and the Church Center app allows you to see what's going on. Through the different serve projects we do throughout the year, uh, the many things that we have coming up, you'll find out through the Church Center app, and you can register that way. Make it a part of your, your app. You know, and I have like 100 apps on my phone, and the Church Center app is a part of it. And so I use those apps to stay connected, to be a part of what we're doing here at the church. So find your church, at one, find One Oak Church on the Church Center app. It'll be helpful to you. Yeah, it's really super easy to keep track of, and, and we'll do registrations. We'll help you if you need to register for an event, always at the info desk. But we really, really want you to download this the Church Center app, because it's going to be what we use all year long for all of our events and things. In fact, I want to let you know about a special event that's coming up on Saturday, February 8th. Let me see all my ladies. Woo! We are having a wild love girls night. You want to be a part of it. It's going to be so fun, and I'm so excited for it. And my very good friend, uh, Pastor Lloyda Howell from Columbus, Ohio, is coming to speak to us and share with us. And she is funny. She is awesome. And she has a word from God for you. You do not want to miss this. It's going to be a great time to connect to each other and find some new friends and connect to God. It's all We're all about connecting here. So you can sign up on the Church Center app right now. Registration is open. It is free, but we need to know that you're coming so we can plan for you and have a seat for you. So go ahead and register online. Again, if you need help, please meet us or our team members out in the lobby at the info center, uh, and we'll get you all registered, and, and it'll be no problem. Absolutely. Yes, Jesus does go to Columbus, Ohio. So we do that. So Miss Lloyd is going to be here. It's going to be we a great time. We still love her. We yeah. still love her. It's going to be a great time. You want to be a part of that, ladies and, and gentlemen. We'll, I'm sure we'll have something to do to get ready for that as well. Uh, but let's support that weekend. It's going to be a great time at One Oak Church. As we get ready for some great things happening, tomorrow we begin our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And if you've ever done something like this, or maybe you haven't, I encourage you to do this with us. Let's all go on this journey together. We have a lot of resolutions that we've made for this year. Let this be something that you do. Uh, you've heard me say this, but our response to the new year is not a resolution we write or the words we say, but it's a repetition of ways. Why not do something for 21 days? 
They'll tell you that it takes 21 days to simply start a habit or break a habit. I believe in these 21 days, you can start a new habit of prayer, a new habit of a daily devotion. You might break some habits that you've been trying to break for a long time. And so allow this to be something you do. Here's what fasting does. And fast from whatever you want. You can fast fast food if you have that addiction. Just fast fast food. And I, I, here's what I do. If there's something in your refrigerator that you, man, that you, when you open up that fridge, you're like, man, I like that. And for 21 days, you can say, no, I'm not going to have that. Then that's fasting. Does that make sense? Is that helpful to you to let you know, man, I, I really like that. And for 21 days, I'm not going to have it. And that means after 21 days, it's not going to be there because either it's going to spoil or you're just not going to be able to take it. So that is a sacrifice. That's what fasting does. And, so, and I'll, I'll tell you, in 21 days, we've had people uh, that have done this over the years, and they have, they have literally changed their, their daily diet because of what they've done, because of fasting. Now here, fasting is not a diet in the sense that it changes. It'll, it might change the way you look because that's what a diet does, but fasting changes the way you see. Diet changes the way you look, but fasting changes the way you see. Diet changes the way people see you, but fasting changes the way you see others. And so you're going to go to the gym tomorrow, but you're beginning a fasting and praying. And now you're going to the gym not for a workout, but you're going to the gym to witness. Because it changes the way you see things. You're not going to work just to get a paycheck, but you're going to work to fulfill your promise and telling someone else about Jesus Christ. That's what it does. And fasting is not twisting the arm of God so you can get what you want. Fasting is I'm putting my body in subjection. I'm, I'm, I'm leading the way. I'm pushing some things away, and I'm taking charge of my, my flesh in 2020. So come on this journey with us. You'll be able to follow along. Go to the website today or tomorrow specifically, and you can download a prayer guide to help you along the way. Also stay up to date on social media and what you need to do and how, how we're praying, what we're praying for each and every day. We believe that God's going to do something over the next 21 days. And at the end of the 21 days, come to church that Sunday. It's going to be a great day here at One Oak Church. I'm asking your ushers to come at this time. We're going to prepare to give today. And to all of our new friends in the room, I want you to know that do not feel obligated to give. This service is our gift to you. We're really glad that you're here. But if you'd like to give, we say thank you. I want to make every opportunity for you uh, to give as possible. There's, a, You can give with the envelope at your seat, and you can give that way. Just put some money in the envelope. You can write on there. You can just drop in the bucket. However you'd like to do that, you can also text to give 77977 and simply one word, One Oak Church. But before you give, I want you to do this. Ask God what he would have you do. Ask God. And whatever God says, obey. Obedience is our responsibility and outcome is God's. It's never, uh, never what Robbie wants you to do, never what Danielle wants you to do. It's just ask God and just do it that way. Last year, we presented a challenge to our church. We said, hey, I believe that this is what God's calling us to do. And that challenge was is that we believe we can do more in 2020 than we've done in 2019 and in years previous. We believe that this year is going to be our best year. We believe that God's going to take us from portable to permanent. We believe that. Pastor Robbie, when, when, when are we going to move into a permanent building? When God provides that building, we'll move into it. All right? And we're believing that. And so I believe in asking God for big things. And I stood on this stage in December, and we were doing our legacy offering. And I mentioned to you that I believe that this is what God wants us to do, and that is to buy a step van or a FedEx truck. And a step van would be used for, in our church, would be used to help provide the needs to those uh, who, are, who, are on, who are less fortunate. And maybe provide blankets for those in need, coats, hats, whatever they need, or lunches, to be able to do that. To use this van, to be able to take our church mobile. To not just be a place where people have to come to, but we can take the, take the things to people. And I presented that, and I said, man, I think someone here has the ability to, to buy the van. I'm telling you, before I got home that day, Someone called me and said, Pastor Robbie, I walked to the doors of my house, and God told me, they said, God told me to buy the church that van. And I want you to know, they gave $10,000 to the church so we can buy that step van. How awesome is that? On Legacy Sunday, we had, we had a goal. We had an unwritten goal. We wanted to, raise, we wanted to bring in $25,000 to help our partners that we partner with through church planning, uh, through our, our, our mission partners, One Child, Convoy of Hope, also the things we need to do this year around the church. 
we had an unwritten, we wanted to do 25,000. Like, God, if we could do 25,000, that'd be great. But if we get close, that'd be okay too. And so on one Sunday in December, you contributed, you gave this amount, $47,756. Come on, come on, give yourself a big, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. That's exciting. $47,756. You did that. We did that. Your contributions on one Sunday. Come on. High five someone and said, that was me. Just high five, say, that was me. That was me. That was me. Don't lie if it wasn't. No, I'm just kidding. You can be seated. <laughs> Someone's high-fiving like, they're just high-fiving. <laughs> but it wasn't, about, it wasn't about an amount. It really wasn't. It was about participation. We wanted to get everybody involved. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for what you've done. We are, we are a church that we promise to be a river of God's blessing and not a reservoir. We're not going to hold this. I promise you we're going to help a lot of people uh, with, with that offering. So thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We honor you, we thank you, and we believe that this year is gonna be our best year. Today, we're gonna take one small step, and that's our challenge for you this year. Take one small step, one small step in your relationship with God, one small step into new territory, one small step. We believe that God will honor that step. It's not about the pace you're going in, but about the direction. Come on, you don't have to hurry, just take a step. We believe that today. Thank you for being at church today. Be blessed as you give, and check out this short video. We stand at the edge of this new year. These 365 days in front of us. And instead of letting them blow by us, we look each of them in the eye. And one by one. We live them with intention. 365 days of sheer purpose. Each lived like it's the only day we've got. What if I live every day like no other day is owed to me? I'd reach out to my dad, make things right before it's too late. On my sister's birthday this year, I'd call instead of text. I would wake up in the morning and I would ask God what He wants me to do. I'd take those vacation days I still haven't used. Instead of inviting her to coffee, I'd invite her to church. Make myself get up early so I can watch cartoons with my kids. I'd give myself a break. I would take her to that park she's been wanting to go to, the one that's all the way across town. I'd say I love you, and I'd say it every day. On Thanksgiving, my table would be open to the whole neighborhood. Mother's Day would mean more than a $5 card. I'd let God have all the stuff weighing me down. I'd have more courage, because I'd have nothing to lose. I would take Jesus seriously when he asked us to feed the hungry. Serve the very least of these. Look after the sick. I'd be quicker to forgive because he forgave me. Living every moment with intention. Taking every purpose by the horns. Leaving nothing unsaid. Leaving nobody behind. Making every minute count. I would use every hour I had on this earth. To love God. To love others. One intentional day at a time. So this year we take one step, one intentional day at a time to receive all that God has for us. I I don't know what your religious background is, or even if you have one. And it doesn't matter today. So I want you to know you came to a church. It's not about striving for perfection in God, but it's about the direction that you're going in. I want to take one, one step, one step. One step in my faith. Maybe, maybe the one step is you raising your hand for the first time. Maybe the one step for you is at the end when I'm going to ask you to do something, I ask you to come up around this altar. Pastor, why do you have people come around the altar? Why do you have people raise their hands and do those things? Because I believe something happens to us spiritually when we do something physically. When we take those steps, when we do that, even though the Lord said, hey, Peter, you can come on the water. Peter actually he took those steps. He did, the, he did the action of walk. He had the faith. He, he had the word of God, but there's an action to follow it. I don't want you to do the same. One small step for you. And again, it's not about the pace that you're going in, but it's about, about the, just the step that you're taking. It's not about how fast, but, but just that you are taking those steps necessary to begin a new relationship with God, a greater one, a deeper one, one that you didn't have last year, but the one that you're going to have in 2020. A response to a new year is not a resolution of words, but a repetition 
of ways. Resolutions don't change you. Repetition does. Doing it over and over again. You go to the gym tomorrow. It's your first time in a long time. You're going to work out for an hour. You're going to sweat real good. You're going to come home, look at yourself in the mirror. You're not going to change much. I'm just going to tell you. I'm going to let that cat out of the bag. You go several times. Start putting less calories in. And you're burning. You understand what I'm saying? It takes that. It's just math. It is. And you'll see change because you've made some changes. Not just one change, but it's compound. Here's what I want you to do this year. I want you to step into new territory. In new ways. You do this here. This is a welcome mat, right? Many of you have this in front of your house. It says, welcome home to some. This one, I just grabbed at Walmart. It says, beyond the blessed. I kind of like it. And the reason why we have these in our homes is when people come to our house, especially this time, they're just going to wipe their feet off and step in, brush that salt off that they just walked through with the snow and the slush. Whatever they went through that day, whatever they walked through that day, we're wiping it off so we don't take it into new territory. The Bible says that Moses was called from out of a bush. A bush that was not consumed began to talk to him. And Moses realized this is the voice of God speaking to him. And this voice began to tell Moses, I need you to take off your shoes because you're on holy ground. Moses, everywhere you've been over the past several years is, 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 is residue. And I don't want you to take this residue into your new residence. And so I need you to take off your shoes. My daughter, Bree, she's 13 years old. She's a sneakerhead. She is. She'll babysit, make her own money, get birthday money, use it to buy shoes that I wouldn't buy for her. They're too expensive. The shoes I wear, I, I get given to me. I'm like, those, I ain't buying you those Jordans. I'm not buying you those Yeezys. I'm not buying you those, those boots. I'm not doing it. She spends her own money because she understands she can spot really good shoes from a long ways away. She understands that shoes do kind of make a person. Ladies know in this room, give me a good pair. I can wear an old outfit with new shoes. You feel fly. But here's what we have to do. Let's not take the residue of 2019 into 2020. Let's take off our shoes. Let's get this off. Let's not take, take what, was, what we went through last year and bring it into our new destination. One small step. I'm not taking the residue of yesterday into my new day, into my new decade. Can we do that today? God, I'm leaving it with you. I'm leaving it all behind. I'm at the welcome mat of the door of this new destiny, God, and I'm stepping into something great. Don't drag the residue of 2019 into this new year. I love the new year because everything's new. You're wearing your new Christmas clothes. Maybe you're wearing new shoes today. They're white, sparkly white, fresh white because they're brand new. You, you got a new coat, so you wear it on Sunday even though you're hot. But it's new, you're wearing it. Got your Canadian tuxedo on, but you're wearing it. Got everything new. You, got, you smell good because you got new cologne. Smell good. I love new. And so we're going to roll out to the gym tomorrow because we're beginning new. We're new, new day, going to the gym. I mean, encourage you, get some merch. Go to the gym tomorrow. We're clearing all of our church merch. It's like five bucks for a t-shirt. Wear that tomorrow to the gym. It all goes to missions. Do that. You roll up to the gym. I got a membership a few years ago at Planet Fitness. Anyone Planet Fitness members? Planet Fitness members, there's a few of us. Like I walk into Planet Fitness for the first time and they have Tootsie Rolls at the counter. Like this is what got me here in the first place. Like you're enabling me. Like stop. Like I'm working out with Tootsie Rolls in my pocket. How is that okay? I get in my car. I'm like, I know my wife's been to the gym because there's Tootsie Roll wrappers on the floor. I went and worked out today. Yeah, I know there's Tootsie Roll wrappers everywhere. And they're purple. This is about moving in the right direction. I know you're making big resolutions for this year, but I want you to make big requests. Honor God with your requests. Ask for something big this year. The French conqueror Napoleon in his quest to rule the world was quite surprised on one occasion when he encountered unexpected resistance while attempting to capture an island in the Mediterranean. 
The fighting was fierce and he lost many good men in the battle before finally overcoming the enemy. Napoleon and his generals were having a celebration feast when from out of nowhere it seemed, a young officer approached him. Napoleon saw the young man and asked abruptly, what do you want? And the young man, sir, please give me this island. The generals were deeply offended by the brashness of this young man. But suddenly Napoleon asked for pen and ink and promptly began writing out a deed to the island. He then signed it and gave it to the impetuous officer. By the time the generals were astounded, they asked their leader, how could you give away this island? So much sacrifice, so much life was given for it. Napoleon responded, he honored me by the magnitude of his request. Did you catch that? He honored me by the magnitude of his request. I don't think so many of us pray prayers that can happen on their own. Through some hard work and ingenuity, we pray prayers that'll happen because of what I did. But when was, when was the last time you prayed a prayer so big that the only way it could happen was God? The only way it could be fulfilled was God. Honor God with the size of your request in 2020. Make it so big that only God can answer it. Honor God with your request. I think so many of us, we're, we're, we're praying for mud piles when we should be asking for islands. Stand with me. I'm going to preach today. I'm going to share some scripture. You're like, haven't you already been preaching? No. Nope. Revelation 3.20. It says this, look, I stand at the door and knock. Everyone say knock. Say knock, knock. You should say it like you're about to tell a joke. Knock, knock. If you hear my voice, and open the door. Notice the coordinating conjunction there. If you hear my voice, and. It's not just hearing the voice, there's an and. It's not just hearing the voice of God, it's not even just hearing the knock, there's an and to it, and I think God is wanting us to step into that area this year. I hear you, God, I hear you knocking, and I hear your voice, but the and is what I'm preaching today. And open the the door. There's something about opening the door of our life to God. Because if you'll do that, he says, I will come in and we will share a meal. And it'll be together as friends. I believe for many of us, we have just had the knocking experience with God. Maybe many of us, we've just heard the voice of God. But he wants to come in right where you are and have a meal with you as friends. Because you read the Bible and anytime there's food represented, there's always something, and Jesus is a part of it, there's always something attached to it. Read it. There's a miracle of water into wine. There's meaning with the Last Supper. There's multiplication with the feeding of 5,000. Whenever Jesus is involved and there's a meal, there's gonna be meaning to it. There's gonna be multiplication to it. There's gonna be a miracle to it. Why wouldn't you open up the door and let him into your life? Because there's gonna be a miracle. There's gonna be multiplication and it's gonna mean something. Let us open it to him. Bow your heads, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day, God, that you've granted us this brand new decade. I pray, God, today that our time together would one that honors you, and God, at the end of the sermon, and when we leave here today, we say truly the presence of the Lord was in this place. We thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. High five two people. You can be seated. Great job. Great job. There's a narrative woven throughout scriptures that the creator of the universe desires to have an audience with us. I think all throughout scripture, the very beginning, God has been trying to get back what he lost in the garden. And that was that communion that he had with man to walk in the cool of the day. You read all through scripture where God is our friend. He desires to be our friend. We read scripture that he wants to have a meal as friends. God created man so he would have a friend, so man would have a friend. And that's where we need to have this relationship with God. And that's where religion began to muddy, muddy up everything for us. 
And God said, I just want to put some things back. And you begin to read scripture, you begin to hear this. is that God just wants to have a conversation with us. You begin to read the word of God and these things begin to pop out. And we have this fast coming up tomorrow, 21 days of prayer and fasting. And the reason why we do that is because Jesus said certain things cannot happen unless there's prayer and fasting involved. Even the disciples, Jesus, people the closest to Jesus, were trying to do Jesus things. Get this. They were close to Jesus. They were around Jesus. They went to church. They did these things. But even though they were trying to do Jesus things, it wouldn't happen because they didn't pray and fast. So there's more than just coming to church. There's a personal time that I have to have. There has to be Robbie time with God, prayer, and fasting. That way I can do the things that Jesus did. Help the people that Jesus helped. And so we're praying and fasting for those reasons. Prayer connects us to God and fasting disconnects us from the world. Following Christ is a matter of giving away what we cannot keep so that we might gain what we cannot lose. Please understand that. 2019 was great. Let's be thankful for what God has done. But let's not assume that what he's done is all he wants to do. Man, as great as 47,756 is, let's not assume that's all God wants to do. As great as one step fan is, let's not assume that's all God wants to do. I believe we're going to have a dream center one day. You know what a dream center is? A dream center is where people come and they can be a part of something and not have to worry about finances and be able to afford to be able to be a part of that something. We'll provide their daily needs for them. I want to have a dream center. As I want to be more than just a place where people worship. I want to be a place where people can find their daily needs and help. We're going to give them Jesus, but I want to help you find a job. I want to help you be a better asset in society. I want to help you do the things that you're created to do. And that's what we want to do as a church. I believe God does not design frustrated futures. Most of us are alive spiritually because someone had the generosity and guts to call the greatness out of us. I believe that. There's a stirring and billowing in my spirit. It's an old school sermon. I'm an old school preacher. You might hear it every now and then when I preach. I'm old school. I'm 41 years old, but I preach like an old time preacher. Because I believe in prayer. You might, you might not get a three-point sermon when I get up and preach. You might not get a PowerPoint presentation. But I'm going to scream a little bit and I'm going to give you the word of God. All right? And there's a stirring and billowing in my spirit that just a little talk with Jesus makes everything right. Just a little talk with Jesus makes everything right. The problem is we have more conversations through social media. We have more conversations in here and it makes everything worse. <laughs> It makes everything wrong. I'm allowing what I read on Twitter or what I see in Facebook or what I watch on Instagram to dictate my daily decisions. But I believe that if we'll have a conversation with Jesus today, it'll affect our Tuesday. If we have a conversation with Jesus before I lay my head on my pillow at night, my dreams won't scare me, but they'll excite me for my tomorrow. Come on, somebody. I believe God wants to do something in you and through you. And it starts with talking to him. The apostle writes in Romans 8, no, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, say convinced, that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, for any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The apostle Paul had a convincing conversation one day. It was when he was a bad dude, he was Saul. And there was a convincing conversation that happened with him that he was going to do great things. That his past wouldn't hold him back, but what God was calling to him was going to be great. And when he says more than conquerors, what is that? Like how can you be more than a conqueror? Like isn't it about winning at the end of the day? Isn't it about achieving? Isn't it about winning and placing that trophy on the shelf? Man, I did this, I accomplished this. But what Paul was saying, there's got to be something more than a conqueror. And that's having the understanding of the love of Jesus Christ. That's why he said, I am convinced. Because when I face a battle and I win, that's a trophy on the shelf. But there are going to be times that I lose. There are going to be times that I make mistakes. There are going to be times that I stumble. And I have to be convinced that the love of Jesus Christ is greater than my stumble. That the love of Jesus Christ is greater than my problems and the things I'm going through. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I am convinced that nothing 
shall separate us. You do know what the word of God is, this holy book that I'm holding. It is a continuous convincing conversation. The Bible is all about convincing you that Jesus loves you. It's all about telling you stories of how great his love is, how great his grace is, how great his mercy is. It's a convincing conversation that it tells us that we've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. This is what this word is all about. It's a continuous convincing conversation of the love that Jesus Christ has for each and every one of us. And the church said amen. We're more than conquerors, what the apostle was telling us. We're more than conquerors because we are convinced of the love of Jesus Christ. Why is this so important, Pastor Robbie? Why is this convinced of the love of Jesus Christ so important to us? Because convinced people convince people. When I am convinced of the love of Jesus Christ that surpasses all of my problems, all of my mistakes, then I will go out and tell others about him. Because when I'm constantly caught up in my own problems, my own failures, then it's hard for me to tell someone about the love that I'm not convinced about myself. But when I am convinced about the love of Jesus Christ, then I can walk out the doors of this church, go to the restaurant, and tell the kind waitress about the love of Jesus Christ that has for me, and yes, you as well. Let me say this. If all of your friends go to church, you need some new friends. Ah, you need a a better amen than that. If all of your friends are right here in this room, you need some more friends. If all of your friends know Jesus, you need to find some more friends. Let me tell you this. Have such a relationship with people who don't go to church that you ruin your reputation with religious people. Because religion separates us. Relationship draws us to people. Um, I, I, I I gotta get this to you guys. That I've got to leave this place today and I've got to tell someone about Jesus. That my goal is that next week someone comes with me to church. My goal is that I share my faith with somebody and they're impacted by the gospel. I have to do that. I have to go meet somebody who doesn't know Jesus. I have to be my intention every day. Because if we don't go where the darkness is, how can we make a dent in it? If we're to be light in dark places and all we do is hang out in light places, what are we doing? I'm challenging you and encouraging you. Go find some dark areas. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe it's people that you don't know yet. Find them. Begin to share your faith. Begin to tell people about the love of Jesus Christ and watch it change because that's what we're all called to do. I have to go. I have to have a convincing conversation because I had one. Jesus Christ had one with me. He said, you're not forsaken. You're not forgotten. All of our lives, we've been having convincing conversations. The person you're sitting next to, you convinced to sit next to you. You did. You convinced to walk down the aisle with you. In just a few days, or maybe this year, maybe it was 20 years ago, I convinced her. I did. Flowers just about every week. I would hold the door open for her. I still do. I still do. Drop her off at the front door of the restaurant. I still do that. still do those things. Come on, if you forgot to do those things, I'm giving you 2020, bring those things back. Some of you trying to bring sexy back, just bring, you know, the other things back first, all right? And then it'll bring the sexy back. Oh, come on, somebody. Woo, that's good preaching. <laughs> I got my, my saints who've been married for 40 years saying, yes, sir, Pastor Robbie, amen, bringing sexy back. <laughs> Convincing conversations. My son, who's eight years old now, going to be nine in a few weeks, I noticed something a couple years ago. We were at my daughter's softball game. And we're at their softball game in the summer. We always bring a cooler of food and snacks. If you know anything about my son, he loves food. Loves food. Like, don't take his, if you, don't take, you might lose a finger if you take his food. He'll come at you. He will. We're at this game and we're watching it. And one of my daughter's teammates, she ends up getting hurt. And so she has to come out of the game and, she doesn't come sit at the bench or the bleachers in her dugout. She goes and sits in the stands near us. And I watch as my son gets up from his, his chair and goes and starts sitting next to this girl who just came out of the game. Like she's sitting in the bleachers, and he goes and he sits on the bleacher below her and looks up at the game's happening. He's looking right at her. I'm like, what is going on here? I got to watch this. So I pull my chair a little closer And I listen as my son's son starts giving a convincing conversation to a girl twice his age. He says, hey, girl, you want some snacks? (laughs) Right? Right? 
good move, bro. Good move. And then he was like, he's, he's got to, he doesn't do next. I'm going to tell a joke. He says, knock, knock. <laughs> she says, who's there? He says, woo. She says, woo, hoo. He said, girl, calm down. It's just a joke. Like, right? Well, my son is, I don't know where he's picking this up from, but man, you hope you guys are taking notes. And then he's done. He doesn't know what else to say. He just simply says, hey, who do you want to win? I mean, she's like, my team, I guess. But even at a young age, we begin having these convincing conversations. People, have, we have kids, right? And even at the young age, when they start speaking, they start having these convincing conversations. Like my daughters are 13 now, and they, they, they say they, when they need something, it's not dad, I need something, it's daddy. Like they just add daddy to it. Daddy, can I, can I have? And I'm like, yes, you can. But there's a convincing conversation in the word of God, and this is my sermon today. In John chapter 4, the Bible says a woman from Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me? I'm a woman of Samaria. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Please notice the narrative. They don't have any dealings with us. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that's saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. If only you knew who you were talking to, you would ask for so much more. I think God is wanting us to have more conversations with him because he wants us to ask for more. Not more so you have more, but more so we can do more. More so we can help more. More so we can make a difference. More so we convince more people of the love of Jesus Christ. And the only way I can convince you is I have to have a conversation with him. And the only way you can convince somebody at work, at the gym, in your life, is having a conversation with him. Because the more conversations you have with him, the greater he becomes to you. Can I prove it to you? Can I prove it to you in this story? Can I show you in the word of God how a conversation with Jesus, this, he became more to her? Jesus didn't become more, he just became more to her. Notice the narrative. She says, sir, how come you're asking me, or seeing that you're a Jew, ask of me to draw water? And Jesus said, if you would have just known, if you knew who I was, you would ask for more. And she said, sir, you have nothing to draw from this water. And she, he begins to talk with her about all she has ever done. And he begins to ask her about her husband. He says, well, sir, I, I don't have a husband. He says, well, you've had five. And the one you're with is not your husband. And she says, I perceive you're a prophet. Oh, yeah. They begin to talk about religion, begin to talk about some other things. And, and after this conversation begins to go on and on and on, this woman comes to the realization that he is Jesus. And the Bible says, I want John to come, the Bible says that she leaves her water jar, the very thing that she carried there at noon, in the middle of the day, so no one would see her. So no one would know that she was going. So because this water jar represented her insecurities. I don't want anyone to see me. I don't want to have a conversation with anybody. And so she would go when no one else would be there. It represented her past. Everything that she had done. Everything she had done wrong. And that's what it represented. And the Bible says that when she had this conversation with Jesus. That she left it there. And went to tell everyone in the village of this man she met. Who is the Messiah. She left it there. The water jar no longer was important to her. It was important enough to carry. It was important enough to bring. But it really did represent her past and her insecurities. And when she had a conversation with Jesus, she left that all behind. And the only thing she wanted to do was tell others about who Jesus was. I don't need to carry that anymore because I'm carrying my calling now. I don't need to carry around my past or insecurities anymore because I'm carrying my calling now. The reason why we don't tell someone about Jesus is because of our past. The reason why we don't tell someone is because of our insecurities. And the Bible says that she began to have a conversation with them, telling them that he was Jesus. He just became everything to her. Notice the narrative. She called him Jew. Sir, you're a Jew. Why would you have a conversation with a Samaritan woman? She says, sir, you don't have anything to draw water from. 
He tells her about her husbands. You're a prophet. She goes and tells the village the Messiah is here. The more she talked to Jesus, the greater he became to her. Jew, sir, prophet, Messiah. The longer you talk with him, the more he becomes to you. Have a convincing conversation with him today. Begin to have dialogue with him today. Begin to communicate with him today. The Bible says that she went in and she began to tell everybody in the village about Jesus. And they believed her testimony. They had to. Because she didn't have a jar. <laughs> she did. Ah, this is, they believed them. And then, then they went and talked to Jesus. And notice what happened. The Bible says that Jesus spent two days in Samaria. He was just going through it in the story. But because of this convincing conversation, and because she went to tell someone about him, revival broke out in the village. And Jesus stayed two days in a town that he wasn't, he wasn't welcome in in an area that he wouldn't have been popular in, but he stayed two days. This woman in her convincing conversation with Jesus rerouted the Redeemer, paused the promise maker, stopped the Savior. That's what she did because of this conversation. How many could use Jesus showing up in your life for a couple days? How many could use Jesus on the job for a couple days? How many could use Jesus next to your spouse for a couple days? How many could use Jesus going with your children to school for a couple days? You know what I'm saying, what I'm saying? When you have this conversation Jesus has with you, he ends up spending time in your world. Jesus, I need you on the job. I need you everywhere I go. I need you everywhere I go. Behold, I stand at the door. And I knock. We hear his voice. Who will let him in? Stand with me today. <laughs> Pastor Robbie, this, this is not the part where you do this. You don't usually have people stand here. I want to do something different this morning. Convince people, convince people. This, this is... Social media, that's not the convincing. Don't let this convince you, because it'll change tomorrow. Let his words convince you, because they're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because it's, it's Insta-sham, right? Fallacy of Facebook, tyranny of Twitter. Just being famous on social media is like being rich in Monopoly. It is. Listen to him. Because I have to come out of the shadows and be real before my creator. Because I, how can I be shaped in the image of God if I'm constantly comparing myself with the image of others? So I have to put some things down. God, what are you saying? When I hear his voice, then I have to do something else. I have to let him in. What's letting him in? in? That's, that's letting him into my home. That's letting him into my career. That's letting him into my dreams. That's letting him into every area of my life. It's not just my Sunday, God. It's got to be my everyday, God. The Bible says in Acts that Simon Peter was arrested for preaching the gospel. And he was put in prison and he was placed in prison between two jailers and that he was sleeping. And that this angel appears to him and tells him to put on his shoes and after he puts his shoes on, the, the angel takes him out of the jail, out of the prison, out of the courtyards. When Simon Peter realizes that he's been busted out of prison, he says, I'm going to go to Mark's house. That's where they're having church. He went to Mary's house, to Mary who was John Mark's mother. The house was packed with praying friends. When he knocked on the door, Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. When he knocked on the door, a young woman named Rhoda came to see who it was. But when she recognized his voice, Peter's voice, before I stand at the door and knock and you hear my voice, notice the comparison. She was so excited and eager to tell everyone Peter was there that she forgot to open up the door and left him standing in the street. Now as funny as that is, to read that in the word of God, I think a lot of us are there. That everything we've been praying for is knocking on the door. 
And we're okay with just hearing it. When God says, if you'll let him in, man, it's something more. This can go with you tomorrow. Don't just hear what this preacher's saying today. Let it go with you tomorrow. Open up your heart and your life to the Holy Spirit. Open up your heart and life to the miraculous. Open up your heart and life to what God wants to do tomorrow and each and every day in you. Because it's not just about today, please. We come together and we celebrate today. But I want this to go with you tomorrow. Marcus, I want this to be in your life tomorrow. Lindsay, I want this to be in your life tomorrow. It's more than just today. It's, it's every day. The scripture goes on to say, but they wouldn't believe her. Why wouldn't they believe her? Because they didn't have evidence. Oh, man. There was no physical evidence of Peter. They didn't believe her. We have to make sure that it's more than just the voices we share, the words we share, but it's the actions we show. Like what happens today should change my Tuesday. I should be a kind person tomorrow because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. Let it show tomorrow. They wouldn't believe her, dismissing her, dismissing her report. You're crazy, they said. She stuck by her story, insisting they still wouldn't believe her and said it must be his angel all this time. Poor Simon Peter was standing at the door in the street, knocking away. He's just patiently knocking. Finally, they opened up and saw him and went wild. You know what the Greek for wild is? Wild. It's wild. They did something they had never done. Their expression of joy and emotion was beyond what they could contain because everything they'd been praying for happened in that moment. It happened. Like the Lions winning the Super Bowl. It was a miracle. He was dead. But now he's standing at the door and knocking. I'm telling you today, when you open up the door, to everything that Jesus has for you. It'll draw things out of you that you didn't even know was possible. I'm gonna take one step in prayer. I'm gonna take one step in worship. I'm gonna take one step in my relationship with God. Come on, somebody, this year, let's make a greater impact. Let's do more, let's see more, let's achieve more. Let's not just hear the voice of God, but let's see everything that he has for us. So here's what I want you to do. If you, I challenge you to take one step up around this altar. Take one step from the back row. Take one step from the front row. Come on, take that one step and come up around this altar. Let's worship one more time together. They're gonna sing. We're gonna pray. But come, grab your spouse by the hand. Don't come alone. Take that one step. Maybe you've never done this before. Lift your hands and voices. Sing with the band. Come on, let's do this right now. Do it. Sing it. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. It's a sign of surrender. My son used to say, Dad, hold to me. 
Now he would put his arms up like that and I would grab him. And when, he t- when I took him into my arms, I realized what he was doing. He was able to see things and reach things he couldn't do on his own. And so what you're doing today is, Heavenly Father, take me into your arms. Pull me close to where you are so I can hear your heartbeat, so I can hear your voice, so I can hear my destiny for my life. Come on. He's a promise maker. He's a way maker today. Come on. Sing a band. Come on. Talk to Jesus right now. Open up your heart and your voice. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. seconds, but I want you to sing it. And this is an old song that my bride does a really good job at singing it. But I I do believe that the Spirit of God is calling you to deep waters. Don't be afraid of the deep waters. Please don't be afraid of the deep waters. It's in the deep that you you couldn't see things otherwise. You know what I'm saying? It's in deep waters that things get a lot bigger. It's in deep waters that things that have been buried for generations that you can uncover, treasures. There's things down there in deep waters that you couldn't find in the shore of your life. Let God take you to deep waters in 2020. Let the Holy Spirit begin to move in your life. We are a spirit-filled, spirit-led church. Don't let that thing, don't that let that scare you. We are a Holy Spirit church. And I believe in 2020, God's going to empower you. God's going to baptize you. The Holy Spirit is going to take up residence in your life. And what we're going to see this year is going to be amazing. Come on. In your own way, I want you to begin to pray. Begin to talk to God. Sing, baby. Come on, spirit lead us. Come on, sing this with her as she sings. Let this be your anthem in this moment. Come on. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet. I don't have control in the deep waters, God, it's you. It's in the deep waters, God, that I trust you. Wherever the winds and waves would lead me, God, your will be done. Yeah. Come on, borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And Spirit, 
sing it with her. Come on. And you raised my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours. And you are mine. If you would, just bow your heads and put your hands down beside you. Every eye closed, every head bowed. If you're in church today and you've never given your life to Christ, you've never said yes to Jesus, or maybe it's been a long time and 2020 is a fresh start, a new beginning in your life, and you want to say yes to Jesus Christ, today begins new for you. If that's you today and you want to say, Pastor, I want to be included in this final prayer, when I count to three, just raise your hand and drop it right back down. A new year, a new you, a new decade, new beginnings. One, two, three, raise your hand, raise your hand. Thank you for the hand. Drop it right back down. Drop it right back down. Thank you for the hand. Keep your head. Eyes closed, head bowed. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Repeat it after me and say it out loud. Everyone in the church, we'll all say this together. Say it with me. Heavenly Father, I realize today that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I repent of my sins. Jesus, I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, come on, clap your hands. You're here for a reason today. Not just this day, but every day. You've been put on planet Earth for a purpose. And why don't you come along this journey with us and let's discover it together. Let's help bring change. Let's help take light to dark places. Every day, 21 days, have a convincing conversation with your father. I'll tell you this, I have, I've got a good dad. I've got a great father. Every, every birthday and every Christmas, he writes in my car, Tony, and he, it's not just the words that have been put there by Hallmark, but he writes in it, line by line, telling me how proud he is of me. I've not been the best son all my life. I am in the better son, though. I got a little younger brother. I'm better than him. My dad knows how important that is to me to write those words down and tell his son how great he is and how much he loves his son. The Bible says, how much more does your heavenly father know how to do that? If our earthly fathers know how to give good gifts, how much more does our heavenly father know how to do that? And if my father knows how to speak well words to me, how much does your father in heaven know how to do that? He's not gonna call you broken, he's gonna call you blessed. He's not gonna call you failure, he's gonna call you forgiven. Have a conversation with him. Have a talk with him. It'll change your every day receive the word of God today. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Our prayer team is gathered today. If on your way out you would like to pray with one of our prayer team members, they'll be there to pray with you. Thank you for coming to church today. I hope your resolution to go to church becomes a repetition, and we'll see you next week. Do not miss next Sunday. I've got a word to share with you. Woo, I'm so pumped. I almost shared it today on accident. My prayer today is I pray that the Lord blesses you and I pray that the Lord keeps you. I pray his face shines upon you and our God is gracious to you. I pray his countenance is turned towards you and our great God gives you his perfect peace. And this week you walk in blessing and favor and receive all that God has for you as we begin 21 days of prayer and fasting. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Clap your hands one more time. New friends, thanks for coming to church today. Fill that card, get your gift. We'll see you next Sunday. Have a great week.